Marami sa atin, pag bago mag-build, nagre-research talaga ano yung best parts for their build, for their use case, ano yung best value na parts. And a lot of our videos deal with that. Paano ka pumili ng parts para bagay sa budget and sa kailangan mo. Pero research never ends. Kahit nabili mo na build mo, there's still some work to be done to ensure that you're getting the best value out of it. There are two schools of thought for this, either future-proof or upgrade path. Ano ba yung pagkaiba nila and what do we recommend for your computer? Pag-usapan natin, pero bago nun, kakausapin ka ng sponsor natin. Bibili ka ng PC, most likely kailangan ng Windows. Pero saan ko kukuha ng legit Windows? Daming options, daming prices. Ah, halito! Buti na lang, may cdkeyoffers.com Madali lang ang order! Search for the software you need, add to cart, daan ka sa payment options nila, Wala pang 5 minutes, finished! May legit working CD key ka na para sa Windows mo. Gamitin ng aming code para makakuha pa ng discounts. Kaya kung naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software, Check out cdkeyoffers.com Yung future-proofing na sa pangalan. For example, waterproofing. Whatever is waterproof, hindi naapektuhan or hindi tumatalab yung tubig sa kanya. Ganon din daw dapat yung future-proofing. You are secure against the future. So yung mga rig na future-proof, good sila for 5 years, 6 years. And paminsan narinig mo tong term na to sa mga builders, sa mga nag advice ng builders. But personally, I think it's kind of baloney. It's very hard to future-proof properly. I mean, yes, kung basic naman yung setup, pang office lang, Future-proof talaga yun. I mean, you get decent specs that will be good for even 10 years. Kasi hindi naman nagbabago yung word processing, surfing the web, yung browsers. The system requirements for those things are generally stable over a very long time. But the idea that you can take performance or games and say na minimum good tong computer na to for 5 years, medyo alanganin yun. Number one, kasi paiba-iba tayo. What you find acceptable, I might not find acceptable and vice versa. Sobrang subjective ng future proof, subjective on the part of the user, as well as for developers. Hindi naman natin alam ano yung lalabas na bagong software and, and ano yung mga requirements niya. Hindi rin natin alam ano yung lalabas ng mga hardware brands and how their innovations will impact software development. So yung future proofing na yan sounds good as a marketing term, but as a practical way to build computers, it really doesn't mean a lot. Upgrade Path assumes from the get-go that you will need to spend something in the long run to keep your system competitive. This is a more realistic way of looking at things. Sa future-proofing kasi, yung gusto mo mangyari, magbabayad ka na upfront, tas good na yung system mo for 5 to 6 years. Sa Upgrade Path, sa simula pa lang, alam mo na na magagastos ka somewhere down the line, may papalitan ka, may ipapasok ka na bago. To keep your system up to date, para kaya niya yung mga bagong programs, yung mga requirements ng bagong software. Sa Upgrade Path, you're usually not getting the latest and the greatest, but you're putting yourself in a position to get the best value for your parts down the line. So yung Upgrade Path, parang chess yan. You're supposed to be thinking four steps ahead all the time. Kung ito yung binili ko na mobo ngayon, ano yung options ko sa kinabukasan para mapalitan yung CPU, yung RAM? Kailangan ko ba palitan pa yung GPU? Yung key sa Upgrade Path is thinking ahead. Upgrade Path begins with choosing the right motherboard as the motherboard may domino effect yan kung anong compatible na CPU and RAM. Yung mahalaga, kailangan same socket yung CPU and yung motherboard. We talk about this a little bit in our Bibili ka 2022 video. Kung bibili ka ng computer, ano yung kailangan mo malaman para hindi masayang pera mo. Magbibigay tayo ng halimbawa. Let's say bumili ka ng Ryzen 5 to 600. That's a socket AM4 CPU, so socket AM4 rin yung motherboard. Ngayon, kakalabas lang ng bagong Ryzen 7000 series. Hype na hype yung mga tao. Gusto mo na mag-upgrade. Problema, kung mag-upgrade ka from Ryzen 2000 to 7000, tatlong components kailangan mo palitan. Yung CPU, yung motherboard, and yung RAM. Since DDR5 na yung RAM nung Ryzen 7000, and DDR4 lang yung RAM mo sa Ryzen 2000 series. Hindi compatible yung DDR4 at DDR5. Hindi masyado pinag-isipan tong upgrade path na to because having to replace three things and three main components, medyo parang bumili ka na ng bagong computer nun. 
Ano yung magandang halimbawa ng upgrade path? Same example, bumili ka ng Ryzen 2000 series, tapos from the get-go, yung plano mo is to upgrade after two generations. Technically speaking, that's the Ryzen 4000 series, pero lumabas lang yun for OEMs. Medyo mahirap makahanap in the direct-to-consumer market. So yung actual na two generations above the Ryzen 2000 is Ryzen 5000. So, upgrade mo yung Ryzen 2000 rig mo to a Ryzen 5000. Ano yung kailangan mong palitan? Isang component lang, at sana bilhin mo from Hardware Sugar, just the CPU. And you need to upgrade just the CPU kasi compatible pa lahat ng ibang components mo dun sa bagong CPU. Ryzen 5000 is socket AM4, socket AM4 na rin yung existing motherboard mo, and yung RAM mo with the Ryzen 2000 series is DDR4. Yung kailangan mo rin na RAM sa Ryzen 5000 series is also DDR4. So very clear in this example, dun sa hindi pinag-isipan na upgrade path, tatlong components kailangan mo palitan para mag-upgrade to the component na target mo. Pero sa upgrade path na pinag-isipan, isang component lang. Bottom line, having a good upgrade path, having a plan in mind, saves you money. Mas madali pag-isipan yung upgrade path or AMD systems because historically, yung AMD, sinosupport niya yung same socket over multiple generations of CPUs. Ryzen 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, lahat yun socket AM4. And ina-announce sila in advance. Oh, itong socket na to, yung minimum na sa support namin for the next 4 years, for example. Pag sigurado ka na sa socket, mas madaling planuhin yung next upgrades mo. It's not so easy with Intel na may history of changing sockets per generation. Although, medyo nagbabago na yon with the latest Intel 12th and 13th gens. For these two most recent generations, socket LGA1700, same socket yung gamit ni Intel for both of those generations. Pero, <laughs> wala na silang announcement na iso support yung same socket na yon after that. They might, they might not. Yan yung problema sa Intel. Medyo KG sila. And yun nga, historically, hindi sila mahilig mag-support ng same socket over multiple generations. Regardless of which brand you settle on, yun nga, yung mahalaga may plano ka. For example, bibili ka ngayon ng Intel 12th Gen 12400. Decent mid-range CPU and plano mo after 2 years, mag-upgrade ka to an Intel 13th Gen 13700. A much faster CPU and that's still possible with just one upgrade kasi same socket nga sila. And you also need to take into consideration when upgrading your CPU cooler. Paminsan, kung nagbabago yung socket, kailangan mo rin palitan yung CPU cooler. And that's another factor that you need to take in for upgrade path. Although with the latest generation ngayon, backward compatible pa naman sila. Yung socket AM4 coolers, compatible pa naman sa socket AM5. And the LGA1700 coolers are compatible with the previous Intel generations. Although sometimes you do need to get a special bracket from the manufacturer or the brand of your CPU cooler. So hindi all the time kailan palitan yung CPU cooler, but again, something that you need to keep in mind. Moving on to other components, for GPUs actually, hindi siya ganun ka touch move yung upgrade path. That's because basta may PCIe slot basically yung computer mo, gagana naman yung GPU. Yes, you might lose some speed if for example, PCIe Gen 4 yung GPU, tapos PCIe Gen 3 slot yung motherboard. But, while the hardware supports faster PCIe speeds, 4 and 5 na ngayon, the actual performance gains are not that significant yet. So, price to performance, it still makes a lot more sense just to get a faster GPU and put it into a system even though lower PCIe slot yung motherboard. For upgrades, habol mo talaga yung bang for the buck. And if you compare the price of getting one GPU, versus getting one GPU na PCIe 5 versus one motherboard na PCIe 5 then sobrang mahal dun, may cascade effect if you change the motherboard. So you don't really need to worry about the motherboard compatibility with a GPU upgrade. But what you should be thinking about is PSU capacity. Paminsan kasi bumibili tayo ng computers, inisip natin, well, itong rig na to, kailangan ko lang ng 650 watts. And then 2-3 years down the line, bibili ka ng mas beefy, mas malakas na GPU, syempre kailangan niya ng mas maraming kuryente. Needs a lot more energy to fuel that beefiness. 
Tapos doon ka palang bibili nung PSU with higher wattage, 750 watts, 850 watts. Para masulit, we do recommend getting a higher PSU up front. Yung may headroom or may allowance na, not just for the needs of your existing rig, pero para sa needs mo na rin kung upgrade ka. So if you think 550 watts is okay, you might want to get 650 watts ngayon pa lang. If you think 650 watts is okay for your current rig, you might want to get 750 watts ngayon pa lang. And this is actually a bit of future proofing. So you're thinking ahead and you want your current specs to be in line with what you'll buy in the future. A bit of future proofing there. So we mix and match tayo from the two upgrade paths. Future proofing with an upgrade path in mind. Mas mahal siya konti upfront, but really getting a decent PSU and getting a headroom and allowance is something that you benefit from right away. Hindi sa kinabukasan mo mararamdaman yung headroom or yung allowance ng PSU. It's really worth it for peace of mind. And also in general, you never know when some components might need more power. Upgrade path also affects storage and you might want to think ahead ilang drives ba kailangan mo. There are a limited number of SATA ports on a motherboard or M.2 slots. It's easy to think na, oh, madali lang naman magdagdag ng storage. It's true, madali lang ng magdagdag. But especially if you're getting a medyo budget level computer, mas konti yung available na SATA ports for SATA storage. Mas konti din yung M.2 slots na available. So be aware and plan ahead just how many drives you'll be putting into your computer and kung may kadugtong or corresponding slots ba na available for that extra storage. Sayang lang pera mo kung bumili ka ng bangong hard drive or SSD tapos puno na pala yung motherboard. May remedyo naman yan. There are external exclosures for hard drives or SSDs but the transfer speed is usually slower so you really want those things plugged directly into your motherboard. Yung mahalaga sa upgrade path is actually walking the path. Yung may destination in mind ka na, and everything you do now is in preparation for that destination. Whenever you buy a new part, check to make sure first that it's part of the plan na compatible siya with your existing parts. Basically, have a plan and stick to that plan. Mas makakatipid ka talaga sa upgrades kung hindi bara-bara yung pagbili mo. If you already have set goals in place, ngayon pa lang on how your rig will change. Thanks for watching. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up to date yung inventory dun. Kung in stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.